These are AA rechargeable batteries. They are very common and I have a lot of them. I had many requests, actually just one request, to make some simple DIY projects. So I'm going to show you four simple DIY devices using AA batteries. What do we need for these projects? Some enclosed battery holders, the most useful are with 3 and 4 slots. These AA rechargeable batteries have a nominal voltage of 1.2 volts and a maximum around 1.3 volts. Most of them have a capacity of 2000 mA. To charge them you can use a simple battery charger like this which can charge two batteries at a time connected in series. Or you can use a more complex charger. This one can charge 1 to 6 batteries individually and displays the charging level. It can even tell you if a battery is faulty. What else do we need? I have these electronic components. Let's use them to make some simple projects. Let's start with the battery powered amplifier. For the audio input signal we need a stereo cable with 3.5mm jack. I'll use this PAM8403 digital amplifier, it's very small and powerful, it can deliver 3 watts per channel, and it has a very low price, especially if you buy more pieces at once. It works with 4 ohms and 8 ohm speaker drivers, so it's perfect for this project. I've placed purchase links in the video description. We also need some small speaker connectors, I'll use these PCB terminal blocks. The amplifier maximum supply voltage is 5.5 volts. We need 4 batteries connected in series. 5.2 volts, that's good enough. Most of the components will be glued on the battery holders, even the wires. We take some simple measurements to figure out where the components will be mounted. The amplifier will be fixed with double-sided foam tape. I'll use super glue for the speaker connectors because they need to be strong enough when I tighten the wires. To easily solder the PCB terminals to the amplifier I'll bend the pins. I'll prepare the voltage supply wires and audio input wires and solder them to the amplifier board. For the audio wires, usually red is the right channel. Finally, you can cover the soldering joints and wires with hot glue, to avoid short circuit or breaking them. You can even cover the amplifier board to protect it, but for now I'll leave it uncovered. And that's it, let's give it some batteries and try it. So, let's say you're at a party and their audio system breaks down. What are you going to do? Well, if you're truly a DIY electrical nerd, you take out your pocket amplifier, connect all the wires, you also need to bring your pocket screwdriver to this party, and get the party back on. If you connect a Bluetooth audio receiver and some speakers, you will have a Bluetooth audio system. Next, let's make a simple power bank using this 5V step-up converter with USB port. The step-up converter will be fixed to the battery holder with double-sided foam tape.
the input voltage needs to be between 0.9 and 5 volts and the output voltage will be 5 volts, so I will use 3 AA batteries. I'll cut the wires to the needed length and solder them to the module. I'll also glue the wires so they won't get caught in something. The output current varies depending on the input voltage and current, but I've never got more than 600 milliamps from this converter. If you think the foam tape is not very good, don't worry, it's strong enough to hold the battery's weight. If you want better protection for the boost converter, you can cover it with hot glue. Let's turn it on and use the USB tester while charging this phone. Wow, 410 milliamps. Now let's build a mini Bluetooth speaker using these components. The Bluetooth module will be powered with a micro USB connector from a simple cable. We need two tiny speakers, I have found these forum speakers which will be perfect for this project. I'll use the Bluetooth module speaker connector. I don't want to solder the wires to the circuit board because I may use the module in the future project. This Bluetooth module uses the same PAM8403 IC as the amplifier we tested earlier, so it's very good. Let's test it before start gluing the components. I'll rearrange the wires and use a simple switch to turn the device on or off. Next, the speakers will be glued to the battery holder. I will arrange them in a way that they will provide a stable base. The wires will be soldered and insulated with shrinking tubes. I also need to solder the tiny switch on the positive wire. I'll use hot glue to fix the switch in position and double-sided foam tape for the Bluetooth module. The wires will be covered with hot glue for protection. And now let's test the DIY mini Bluetooth speaker. Well, it works, that's all I can say. Moving on. I like these small and powerful 1 watt LEDs. What can we do with these LEDs and some batteries? Well, a simple flashlight. To prolong the LEDs life, it's recommended to use them with a cooling radiator. I'll measure the battery's holder space and cut a piece of strip board with those measurements. The LEDs will be soldered on the strip board, which will also act as a cooler. I'll also use thermal paste, so the heat will better dissipate on the strip board copper. 
The LED spins are very short so I need to solder them fast because I don't want to heat up the LEDs too much. This strip board will heat up due to the LEDs so it cannot be fixed with foam tape. I'll use super glue instead. Again I'll cut the wires to the needed length, solder them to the strip board and glue them to the battery holder. And now let there be light, 3 watts light to be more precise. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel.